uh, the compass, that is not going to work with the conference line somehow got, yeah, got sure in why. there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get started. Mm -hmm. This is embarrassing. Okay. Let's, uh, wait, we have Lisa Cooper, who is the Super Product Development Coordinator, and she's going to tell us, talk uh, to us about the uh, infographics. She's, she's going to appeal those. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you, and I hope that the rest of the webinar goes more smoothly than this first part did. Um, I'm glad you're here. We're all very glad you're here. Um, and let's get started. The, fir the first thing I think we uh, wanted to look at was what is the graphic? Uh, you probably already know, but sometimes um, it's a case to give that basic information. Uh, Infographics are a very good way to um, reveal data, lots of data, in a simple and visually compelling way. So um, they, it, what, it, what makes them really nice for parent centers is that they are a very good way to tell a story that begs to be told. So you can use the infographics in a lot of different ways. And we're going to talk about that today. Uh, and you, you can see at the bottom of your screen um, uh, a link to an article that discusses what infographics are and why they've become so popular, as well as this one. This one also has a link at the bottom. Why, why are they such the rage now? And frankly, uh, it's because they really attract the eye, uh, especially if you're a visual learner. Um, it, it just boils essential complex data down to very scannable, easy digested, taken in quickly. Um, and one of the really nice things about them, I think, is that it'll show that you are an expert's grasp of whatever subject you are revealing in your infograph. Um, while brand awareness is, is something that's very important to us all, it's not quite the same, for, I think, for parent centers as it is for, let's say, um, a for-profit company. But um, the infographics are a way to uh, attract web traffic. Uh, apparently, um, the, what do they call it, SEO, the uh, search engine optimization, finds it very easy to pick up an infographic, because, probably because the information on them is so boiled down that the most important words jump out. Um, it's definitely a way to enhance traffic to your website. I'm sure you can think of a lot of other uses for them. We have listed some here, and you'll notice that uh, we set it up like an infograph. Um, very useful for parent centers, I think, in terms of conducting outreach about your center. Because it is visually compelling, it will draw the eye. and. Um, you want people to say, oh, what's that? And it would be about you and your service. Uh, it's a very good way to quickly inform families, especially ones um, uh, that find reading a lot of text uh, difficult. Uh, it's a very good way to boil it right down to the essential information and to simplify complicated concepts. I'm sure you explain to parents uh, quite often, let's say, steps go through when they have the, uh, they think they have uh, the child has so you you would tell them to go through the process with school um, and it's a really excellent way to boil that process down at one three make it very clear very quickly so to make comparisons fairness about this, about programs that you offer or services and definitely to report on performance. I can imagine that doing an infographic advisory board or your governing board uh, that basically distills what you're up to and what you've accomplished, the number of families you've served or trainings, um, it can be seen you know, in an infographic, which is very powerful. So let's get to the heart of the matter, um, which is let's go and create one. Can, can you all hear me? I hear that uh, I'm going in and out. Oh, well. It's not one technology, it's another. All right. 
this is where we're going to go, and this is where the technology really might get wild, because um, we're going to go online and do a live demonstration. Okay, so I need to share my screen. Right here. I want. You let me know when uh, it is shared, okay? Come on, don't do this. It's coming, Lisa. Coming, it's coming. Okay, well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And I think it might be your phone that's a little far away, and that's why it's you're right up it. on me here. But that. All right. Annoying. I got it. Here, let me know if you see that. Okay, we can see it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so this is where we're going. There are a lot of different software available online that's basically for free, um, unless you go Primo, uh, which you will quickly want to do. But it's not necessary. I picked this one because I've been monkeying around with graphics, and I found this one the easiest. So what you want to do is come here, create a login, I mean, register yourself. I'm already registered. It's very simple to do because um, they, they make it easy. But I'm going to do a new account because I want to show you something. Oh, incorrect login. Well, maybe it thinks I'm already there. All right, we're not going to do it that way. Okay. When you first, after you, if you haven't already done this, go to Easy and register yourself. All you need is a username and a password. It's very simple. And uh, what you'll see the first time you go in, you won't see this top part where it says my visuals because you won't have created any yet. But because I have created some, see on my screen that, uh, that I do have visuals. Underneath of this, this is like going into a treasure trove. Look at all of these templates. They have, these are all public, and you can use any of them, over a million of them. And you can just look at all of the different designs. When you get to the bottom of the screen, it'll load more. See, some are uh, really very few words, like this one. Other ones are very, um, I would think they'd be very hard to create. <laughs> uh, but you just keep scrolling down, looking at things, uh, till you find a design that appeals to you and you want to use to create uh, some kind of infographic on something. All right. Now, I'm going to go in here. This is this part that's kind of tricky. Um, this is my palette of visuals. That I've, and we're going to work with this one. I'm just going to click on it. And I will share with you uh, a link to this template, okay? Let's look at it like a template that you can adapt for yourself. This is the infographic that we created that shows, the, boils the data down from your data collection in 2013-14 about who you trained, how you trained them, what information you disseminated, all of that data that you reported. Um, is boiled down in this. What you want to do, if you wanted to put your own data into this so that you could share your accomplishments as a center with your board or uh, state or, who, you know, whoever, you come here. Can you all see this? Indira, can you see that? To the Save button. We can. Mm -hmm. yes. 
okay? And you can save it as whatever you want to call it um, for yourself. And once you do that, it will appear under my visuals, meaning your visuals. So let's change the name here. Let's save this, and we'll call it Demo. Oh, come on. De demo data, okay? Save. Now, if you come back out here to home, it'll ask you immediately. This is how you get back to your the library of stuff you created and all those public visuals. Uh, you hit the home button, it'll say you're leaving the create creation tool. Cool. You want to. Okay, now you can see right here that it reproduced the other one. So let's go into that. That's what you would do if you wanted to change out the data that's depicted here because all of the parent's data and just make it your own. Now I have data. Let's say this is from one center supporting uh, the year 2013-14. I am going to, let's say this is your, I'm going to insert the data in here, and you can do this for yourself. If you click. Lisa? Oh, yes? Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, we were getting the, yes, we were getting the, um, the little blue screen, but it's back. Oh, dear. Okay. I don't know how well you can see this, but this, this number is surrounded by a box. And what you do is you just click into it. And take your, your data from your center and paste it in there. And then you see that it goes right in there. Come over here to this one. And put in the professional cert. I tell you what, when I looked at the parent center data, it is no wonder you guys work so hard. There is an amazing amount that you do. Look at that number. I mean, that's a lot of people to attend trainings. Now, this part of your data collection that you reported were the individual contacts. So change in your numbers for what's already on this graph. Get what you reported, copy and paste. All right, like that. Oh, come on. And of course, I will say one thing that I have noticed that um, is sometimes it does things, but uh, hopefully it will turn finally. Okay. Now, I won't go through the whole thing there uh, and paste in all the numbers. But that would be essentially how you could do it, pick your own data. And up here is the title, and you can click right in there, and instead of parent centers in action, you can say my center in action, or, or put in your parent center's name, okay? Obviously, you probably wouldn't want this part, find your parent center. But you could say, visit us at, and then come down here and put in the web address for your parents. Now, I want to talk a little bit about graphics, uh, because the graphics are kind of limited when you're just free software. Um, what? They're considered objects, and there, there's a little library um, on Easily of these images. And you can see they're on categories. Choose a category. Well, we probably don't want animals. Maybe we want banners. So they have a limited selection of banners. Um, this banner is, I chose this one. But there are these other ones you can pick. Or we can go down to education. That's another category of objects. 
and they're real uh, black and white, sort of silhouetted, stick figure kind of things. So you may not particularly like what you see there. But one of the really nice things is you can upload your own. So you probably know that um, inside of like, the Microsoft suite, there's a lot of clip art, um, little uh, icons, things like that you can use. And all you would do, say here is the, a picture of the United States map. Um, you might want to put in the shape of your own state. But you could also upload some. And basically, you would be taking it from your own library of clip art. It could be a picture. It could be a uh, sketch. It could be a map uh, of how to get to your center. It could be so many different things, uh, nice visuals instead of these little thick black and white stick figures. Um, and you just, here it says, choose an image to upload. So you add it. Uh, I won't. But um, let's say you just pick wherever from your own computer, and then you upload it. And then you can drag it into this area. So if I just delete that and back to objects, put this one in. You just drag it, drag it into the Click and hold and drag. And then you can resize like that. Um, you can put in shape. Here are some of the ones that the program comes with for free, but you could also um, copy in. I know the Microsoft Suite has an enormous amount of different shapes automatically that you could use. And you can explore. I, that's what I would really urge you to do is come to Easily and look under each of these lids. See what's in there. Like this. Put this one here. Take him away. All right, now, there's so many ways you can manipulate. Uh, in the guide that we did that is on the webinar page um, on, at the Hub, it explains how you can manipulate these. Bigger, change the color to the color palette. Right, you can slide the opacity make it lighter or darker. This here, for those of you who know anything about layout, sometimes one thing gets on top of another and you really want it to go behind or forward, you can position it. So this one here, it'll tell you in the guide we did, you know, to bring it forward or to send it back. Let's say you want this image to repeat. You want to use that image and change the color, which is what we did down here. The meeting, take the one box, color it one way, then copy it, which is they call clone. So when you hit clone, you get copy. And then let's say I wanted to do this box here, then I go and I change the color, and I have a whole new color. You can add text. They have three basic um, sort of preset styles, title, header, and body. But let's say I want body. You just pull it over. And you're not really uh, tied completely to what they say. You can change the size, make it real big. You can change the color. You would have to if you were pasting it on top. Uh, theme here. Come, come with me. Oops. Uh, this is the part where you, you know all technology does it to you. Um, here. All right. Drag him down. You can you. The sky is really the limit in terms of your own creativity, or what pleases your eye and is useful for your data. But 
basic idea is to make it as straightforward and graphically driven, data driven as you can. Um, we took the parent center data that you reported and there were two uh, categories that you're meeting with uh, families or attending with families like their IEP meeting for the child. And then there was a separate category of attending facilitated IEP meetings. And so we combined those numbers and that's what's here. So you might have totally different um, categories that you want to depict such as do the number of children with different kinds of disabilities, they have what those numbers look like if you wanted to communicate that information. Um, but there's a, a lot of things you can do with this program. Under the V themes, I call them themes, I guess, um, those are the visuals. And you can pick from any of these, it's a nice one. Um, it is a timeline about songs, but you could depict uh, the history of your center um, visually like this, or show how your numbers have um, It's really exciting, and uh, you realize that um, there's so many ways you might use this. Oh, come on, go away. Okay. So, I want to save. Now that I've destroyed this graphic, go back out, leave creation tool. And you can see it right here, the little mini one. It's a lot of fun to look through the various infographics. Like if you look at this one, I like this one and I try to do something with it here but it became so cumbersome that um, I gave up and went to something else, <laughs> which you will find yourself doing. Uh, you all might recognize this one. I used this one uh, to create the RDA infographic because it shows all these people and times and places, things that are going on, and I copied it. And it became, where are you? Come on. There. It became my first infographic. There, there it is. Hello. You see, and you have like a pasteboard out here where all the images, you know, you can see what I experimented with um, and didn't use. So there's a lot that you can do here. I'll leave the creation tool. I'm going to talk for a minute about um, how you share, because it, it, it's really rather interesting the way you share. Right? You can either download it yourself, low quality, high quality, or a PDF. Or let's say you do, you've designed one and you want other people at your center to have a look at it and give you feedback. You can share it, click share, it'll give you a, an address. And all you need to do is email that address uh, to your colleagues and they can have a look. And they don't, I don't think they even need to be really registered at easily to be able to look at graphic uh, and give you if you prefer and you wanted to let's say put it on your website uh, but you didn't want to go through all that rigmarole of uploading it you can embed the code in your website so you just would copy all this out and get your web person to put it wherever it is and then the infographic here there right on your website this one Group share, I think it could be very interesting uh, for the parent center network. Um, I haven't really experimented in it, but basically you create a group and um, and that they can, whoever is in your group, you invite people to come into the group, like if SIPR created 
the parent center group. Um, we could email you all the address, and then you come and join, and then work on your infographics there, and then everybody can see, uh, you know, share and get a look at the, the work that you all are doing individually. Um, that's a, apparently a new feature of easy. Okay, um, what's the time here? I guess the last thing I, I, I'd like to share with you all about this graphics. Um, if you want to print them, let's say you want to make a post or take to the, to the fair, to the resource fair and share, um, you would download your image or your graphic in uh, high quality or PDF, PDF probably, and take it to your printer. Um, the, my experience with trying to do this was I went to Office Depot and I asked, you know, what do I need to bring you? And they had, uh, you know, certain sizes that they offered and they could also custom size things. So your average, your small poster, is, I think it's like 11 by 14 and your medium sized poster is 12 by 18 or something like that, and then, you know, you get your big whoppers, uh, kind of wall art, and they'll do banners, they'll do cards, they'll do whatever. All you need to do is give them the PDF. Now, the hard part with this sound was, you see this little arrow down here? Can you see that, everybody? This is a little corner thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you pull it, it. Mm -hmm. you can keep adding, that's where these people come up with these mile-long infographics, and you just keep adding segments. Now, now I have all this space down here I can do stuff with, and also sideways, make it broader, wider. So um, you can basically size these to the dimensions that you'd like, but it's a little trickier than that. It's not quite that simple because they depict this pixels, pixels, as opposed to inches. So your 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 printer is going to say what's the what are the dimensions, and you're going to say oh it's eight by ten, but it, this depicts it in pixels. So you have to do a little brain work on that. Okay, you can zoom in. That's maybe if you want to try and line something up. I noticed that when you move stuff, it will try and line it up for you, but sometimes you have to get in real close and see uh, that that is true. Okay, now let's say you're really sick and tired of, of working on one. You can throw it away. Right thing to do, sort of terminal. Okay. And as you can see, you can go pro. I, we, I didn't investigate what the cost of that or what that involves, uh, but if you get good and frustrated with the minimal amount of sort of images that they have, um, and you, you can explore more. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I can figure out how. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go back to uh, Indira. Can we go back to um, the PowerPoint? I probably yes, should. Sorry. Okay. I probably should ask uh, if anybody has any questions about easily um, in the in the little guide that is on our website for how you work it easily. Um, it has, the last page of it has, has URLs of several other infographic programs um, that, you, that are free. Same, they operate quite similarly to this one. Um, and they have different images available, image library. OK, come on. Let's go here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I tell you, Adobe is not behaving well today. Uh, Hi. And I would like to remind uh, the audience that this webinar is going to be re is being recorded, and you can see all the webinars on the Parent Center Hub. They are there. Okay, we're getting back to it. Good. Thank you. All right. Um, would you like to ask questions now, or, or have me finish and then ask questions? I'll go on for the moment. Okay. We can we can break for a couple of minutes. We'll see if anybody okay. has any questions. Yeah, type your questions in uh, or unmute yourself and ask. Um, and I'll keep talking and then we'll answer the question. You can also create... Okay. Pardon me? You can also create infographics in PowerPoint. Oh, to unmute, you press star six. Star six. Mm -hmm. Um, you can create infographics in PowerPoint, uh, which I've actually found to be preferable if I want to print them of a certain size. Because the way um, PowerPoint works, you can tell the program the dimensions of what you want in inches, yeah. pixels. Um, there, there's a question here, Lisa. You want to okay. answer now, or does the, does the creator own the document? In other words, uh, if we create something, are we the only one with access to it? Um, if you don't want to share it, you don't ever share it, and in that sense, it's yours. Uh, if you want to share it, it's easily done by emailing the shareable link that I showed you at the top of the screen, it says share, and you can either share the link, in which case the person can look at it and can adapt it for themselves, in which case you kind of lose ownership. Um, but that's how all those public documents, public visuals got in there, people shared. And so you, so in that sense, I don't know if that answers your question, you could own it to the extent you wish to own it. If you don't want to share it with the world or other people, um, you don't have to. And then no one will know if you create it in your space. Um, PowerPoint, uh, I, Indira connected me with this um, article here. You think at the bottom of a 10 free infographic template, PowerPoint. And they're really, some of them are very nice looking. They really are. Um, you can download them. All you need to do is, you know, register at, at, the, at that site for free. You can download them. And they're supposedly for the latest version of PowerPoint. Um, I tend to do most everything in a lower version of PowerPoint than what this requires. Uh, and I was very interested to know if, the, if you save it down to a lower version and then manipulate it there uh, in terms of creating an infographic. And you lose certain features when you do that, but it's still possible. Um, so I would also suggest if you have a really recent version of PowerPoint um, that you take a look at these infographics, especially if you're already familiar with PowerPoint. That, that helps a lot. Uh, because you know then you can do all the same things. You can create boxes, color them, and shade them, and uh, there are lots of graphics there that you can auto shape, you know, things like that. So it, it, it's actually very powerful. And we used it to create the infographic you see here that has become, um, or will become, or many of you will see it this summer probably, um, uh, 18 by 24 poster the zipper. And we also created uh, other ones that go like on a display board to find your parent center, uh, about the, the military branch, PTAC, where all the P regional PTACs are. So you, you know, and you can fill up a display board basically with smaller units, individual pictures that you could change things in and out as you wish. Okay.
All right. Questions? Fun. It's really fun. I, I don't know uh, how many of you like infographics, uh, even if they are all the rage. Um, I'm not fond of a lot of them if, if they're very busy. Uh, and some of them really are really busy. But they're powerful. They're a powerful way to communicate with your audience. Your, your um, advisory panels, many, thing, many groups like that. I had thought, wondered to create, I had thought about creating a template that parent centers could use uh, similar to this um, to advertise themselves. And I was at a conference this week, and they actually had like postcard size infographics. So it was very small and very portable, very visual. Immediately got the information out. Uh, it's so much better than all that text, all that text. I think people are very busy, uh, and they like the whammy of the visual with the data on it. Data, then, you know, you don't, you don't need all those words. How many children with autism? Just autism. And then the number of children you served who were, you know, had autism. Two things. People get all the information they need. Anyway, that is our webinar today. And so if you have questions, um, I am more than willing. You can write me. Uh, I, I'm no expert at all. But you know, you start fooling around with stuff, especially when you look in that template library. All of those infographics, a million of them. Uh, you surely can find one in there. Anyway, so where you'll find that as the PowerPoint, eventually the recording of this, uh, including probably our technical difficulties, um, and the little guide that we did. Also. And I'll share this with you all. I'm going to put it in the chat box. want to get started or somehow manipulate that first infographic to show your center's data. Um, you, if you join, if you register it easily, and then use this link, that will take you to the infographic. Uh, of the data collection. And then all you need to do is save it into your area. Just save put your own name, and it'll become, it'll appear under my visuals. Um, and then you can manipulate it. And the same is true of all the other templates you see there. If you want, like one, pick it, save it into your area. Just all you need to do is save, uh, and it will automatically put it in your area. Um, okay. Thank you very much uh, for being here today, and we apologize for our technical difficulties. No questions? I'd be interested to see how people, what occurs to the Parent Center Network, Parent Centers, with respect to how they might use infographics. Um, I go back here to this earlier slide. Gave some of the reasons, ways you might use it. Um, be very interesting to share among the network some of the infographics that you might work with. Um, put them in the in the repository, the hub repository, or uh, a work group maybe uh, on the workspace. Guys, so go have fun. Have fun. And take a minute to, um, I, let me see, Mary says, I will use it to design a sign for shop windows. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a good one.
Uh, and the nice thing about printers, when you go to the printer like, um, let's say, Kinko's or Office Depot, is that they can really render the colors uh, better than a better than you, you know you can do on your own printer because uh, they're set up for that. Anybody else? As we're ending early, everyone can go outside on a beautiful day. Yes, thank you everyone for joining us today, and thank you, thank Lisa. That you. was a great presentation.